Hello everyone. On uh, today's little flight, I thought we'd try something even more different than what I usually try. A helicopter. Now, uh, disclaimer, I'm not a professional helicopter pilot. I'm uh, barely a real normal fixed wing pilot, but I do have a teeny tiny bit of helicopter time and I'll try to explain some of those experiences as we go. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be starting up this. This is a Robinson R22. It's available on the xplane.org store, in case you're interested. And we're going to be flying this over to pick up a box of chocolates, and then we're going to be landing in a nice soft grass field. Uh, presently, we're here in uh, Hartford, Connecticut, uh, just south, actually. This is Hartford Brainerd Field, in case you're curious. And uh, we'll be taking off, flying around, pretending to hover, and uh, going from there. Uh, today, since it is the middle of the summer, I've gone ahead and removed the doors. Uh, when I've flown in this particular helicopter, I have flown with the doors off. It just gets a little windy when you do one of these with your head, but that just makes it more fun. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Get this out of my way for now. So, um, oh, pilot's handbook, just kidding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and lock up the mixture. Go ahead and cover that so I don't accidentally grab it. That would be terrible. I'm going to come over here. There's the master switch. There's the alternator control, and then there's the strobe control. I simply grab the key. Go ahead and start it. So now you're supposed to let that sit for just a second, and then we're going to go ahead and engage the clutch. What the clutch does is it meshes the engine directly to our rotor, which allows us to actually, you know, start turning that thing, because right now it's just kind of looking at me. So to kind of get it on its way, I'm going to grab our throttle, and I'm going to gently pull it to the left, just to give us just a couple more RPM to get this thing actually rolling. Now this helicopter is equipped with a real governor. Oh, it's a little loud. Let me go ahead and put some earmuffs on. There we go. This helicopter is equipped with a governor, so as a result, um, it's going to control the throttle setting once it gets past a certain point. So um, now that we got everything kind of connected gently, I'm going to go ahead and increase the throttle up to about 70%, and then we're going to kind of go ahead and get going. Uh, that looks pretty good, right? Ooh, a little too much. There we go. I'm good. It's going to get a little windy real quick, but that's okay. So uh, before we take off, we just want to double check a couple quick things. Uh, first of all, our maximum manifold pressure today, the outside air temperature is about 30. Uh, sea level is going to be about 23. So take a look here, it's going to be about right there. Uh, let's see, our next item here, I never exceed speed, we're probably not going to get past 1,000. Looks like it's going to be 102 knots, which is, you know, pretty fast, it's not bad. But um, we're probably not going to do better than 90 given our density altitude today, which is going to be very high. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pull this out of your way so you can see better. Okay, so our oil pressure is good, our oil temperature is good, our cylinder temperature is good. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the engine actually going. So to engage the governor, we take the throttle and we very gently rotate it to the left until you feel the governor grab it like it just did right there. That was a little more aggressive than it should have been. In uh, the real helicopter, interestingly enough, the governor rotates this handle down here. So um, as you're holding on to it to go up and down because it's your collective, you can actually feel it rotating in the palm of your hand, which is a little creepy. You can actually override the engine if you're not careful. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a relatively uh, jerky, jerky, jerky takeoff. So we're going to float over to the main runway there straight ahead, and then we're going to go ahead and take a standard one as well. So um, every helicopter kind of has its own little quirk as far as uh, getting air burn. Uh, some of them you need to do what I like to call the J, which is pulling the control back and moving it to your left. Looks like uh, our controls are still pretty seized up. We're definitely going to want to adjust that real quick. Ah, much better. Check our collective, too. All right, I'm happy. Um, what you would do is you pull this back and go to your left a little bit, kind of making a little J. But for this particular helicopter, because of the center of gravity setup, we're actually going to be pushing forward to get this thing to lift off the ground. So you have to kind of be ready for that. So what we like to do is we like to go ahead and uh, gently increase our collective. And as we do so, we can see that the helicopter is starting to get a little light on the skids. This is kind of kind of clue us into what it's likely to do when we apply the rest of the force. So I'm going to push forward just a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and lift this thing off the ground. Whoa, well, I would have failed the flight test about a thousand times if I did that stunt. But I'm needing a fairly hefty amount of uh, forward uh, cyclic here in order to keep it balanced. All right, let's go ahead and gently start moving. Now remember, helicopters have ground effect just like uh, aircraft do. So the closer we are to the ground, the less I need to work the collective to keep us airborne. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, gently rotate. You'll notice by the movement of the cyclic, you really don't need to do much. Right now, most of the work I'm doing is with my feet. I'm going to go ahead and gently proceed over to a uh, 2-0 here. Moving awfully fast, and we're violating pretty much every law, especially since uh, we didn't actually ask for permission to do any of this. So, um, they can see me. Anyway, let's continue. So I'm going to go ahead and take a nice gentle right turn named on this taxiway. Again, I'm not really working the cyclic too much at this point because I don't really need to. And you really want to set that collective and kind of leave it alone. 
The helicopter is going to kind of wander up and down a little bit, but that's just because we've changed direction now. The wind is to our backs. Alright, we don't want to go too fast. So you've got to remember, everything you do, you have to compensate with with the other controls. This is pretty high for a hover taxi, but uh, I'm new, forgive me. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take a left turn and scoot over the grass in just a second. And then we're going to get ready for our takeoff. Go ahead and slow down a little bit. There we are. Go ahead and take our left turn. Now I have a very noisy joystick, so that makes flying this thing a little trickier. So if you see sudden jerks, don't be surprised. Alright, this looks good here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take another gentle little left turn. And now we're facing into the wind. Alright, so takeoff in this particular helicopter is pretty simple. What we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and nose the helicopter over at the same time as gently increase the collective. You don't have to do that much to get this thing ripping. Uh, once we get to the translational lift point, which is about 45, I think it's going to be a little higher because it's so hot today, the helicopter's really just going to rip up in the air on its own. So let's go ahead and do that. So go ahead and tilt forward, a little bit more collective. The trick here is don't go crazy. You're trying to keep this thing in ground effect, but I'm trying to keep it from actually running to the ground. Alright, there's 20, there's 45, and all of a sudden the helicopter just rips itself into the sky just like this. And that was awesome. That's probably one of the best ones I've done in a long time. Okay, so we're a little slow, so I'm going to go ahead and nose over just a little bit. Again, very high density altitude today. I'm going to go ahead and increase the collective just a bit, and now we're rolling. So just a quick little thing of geography here. Over here on my left, whoop, little gust of wind. Over here on my left is uh, wonderful Hartford, Connecticut. It's a very simplified version. And uh, this big scary highway that we're about to be crossing in just a second is going to be, uh, I believe this is Route 2. Hold on, hold on a second, hold on a second. So that's uh, Route 91 north south. Uh, let's see, that's Route 84. Okay, sweet, that's Route 84. Straight ahead. Yep, that's what I thought. Okay, so we're going to be following this place to uh, my favorite chocolate joint, which is uh, located in Bolton, Connecticut. I'm not going to advertise for them. If uh, you're really that interested, you could probably look it up on your own as well. Uh, right now, my feet are ba oh, I should say both my feet are basically on the floor because once this thing gets rolling, it really doesn't take too much work to keep it going where you want it to go. So, oh boy, I wish I could read those traffic signs from up here. So on our left is a little tiny pond. Uh, I guess it's more of a lake, but to me it's more of a pond. And of course, um, we're missing some little details here in the X-Plane scenery, which is a bummer, but it actually does a pretty good job of capturing just how chaotic the uh, highway system is here. So um, I've got to give some props for that. That sign says. We could obviously go a little bit lower and take a look ourselves, but um, we're already violating the law being as low as it is, so I'm sure they will forgive us. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, so um, we're looking for, what is it, exit 58? I can never remember. We're looking for route 384, which I think, if I remember right, it's about a four or five minute flight out to actually catch up to. It's not too bad. Uh-oh, somebody got busted. Oh, don't worry about that clutch light, by the way. It's going to come on from time to time, especially if you're very, very gusty or you're being very, very aggressive with the particular controls at a moment. Um, let's see, everything looks pretty good. I'm going to go take a quick peek and uh, mess up all my beautiful flying here. Yep, temperatures look fine, so I guess I'm not too, too concerned. Uh, we're getting about 85 knots at the moment, which is actually fairly fast. You know, when I flew this thing in the real world, uh, not too far from here, I found that that was about the speed that you could get up to. I could certainly increase collective a little bit like that, you can see the helicopter responding in kind, and get this thing ripping pretty hard. But um, as a result, it's going to get a little buffety, and you just, you know, it's sketchy. And I can already feel the thing starting to wander a little bit, so I can definitely feel that we've gone too fast. Anyway, here's our exit. If you take a look down below on our left, a straight head to our left dishes would be all of Manchester. We're going to go ahead and take this right turn here. This would be the Silver Lane exit for those of you guys who uh, happen to fly, drive this once in a while. Now, um, Route 384 is a really, really cool little piece of road because uh, when I used to drive down it to get to work, uh, in the morning there was basically nobody on it. So you could go ripping on this thing pretty darn fast. Just about as fast as our little helicopter is at the moment. Oh, there's another police car. Uh, maybe it's a good thing we weren't speeding then. Now, one thing you'll see as we head out towards uh, eastern Connecticut is um, you're going to see the mountains start to come out of nowhere, and you're also going to see the amount of trees and lakes start to increase. Uh, right now, we're kind of in the Hartford metropolitan area, so that's kind of why you're seeing a lot of what you're seeing at the moment. We could totally buzz that truck if we wanted to, but uh, again, we're trying to be as polite as possible. Again, the clutch light went on, nothing to worry about. In case you were uh, worried slash concerned, I'm um, not really giving too, too much force on the um, 
rudder pedals at the moment, I should say the anti-torque pedals, because uh, this thing flies pretty well because of the weatherman effect. One thing you'll notice in the middle here is these two little slip strings. They're going to kind of give you a little heads up as to uh, how well you're keeping your uh, helicopter coordinated. Right now, since the string is pretty much centered, it tells me I'm doing a pretty good job with just a little right foot. If I gave it too much right foot, you can actually see the string come out. If I gave it too much left foot or no left foot, uh, right foot, you'll see it start to shoot the other way. It's a really, really handy method to actually determine just how coordinated you're being at a given moment. But uh, you'll actually see those in gliders from time to time, as well as some ultralights, because it just makes it easier if you don't have you know, the little ball that you're pretty much used to. Alright, we're getting about 86, 87, so we're pretty good. We'll be there in probably two or three minutes. So, as I recall, our exit is going to be for the Route 6 exit. By the way, Main Street, Manchester, on our left, in case you're curious. I always want to see it. This is also a really neat community college, which would be pretty much right over here. And uh, I've got lost in their parking lot more than once, but, uh, you know, it's, it is what it is. I'm sure you can figure that out too by doing a little bit of research online. But again, this is supposed to be about the helicopter, not about geography. I just got nothing else to say until we get to our destination in Bolton. It's a very nice looking set of highway there. Getting a little bit more altitude than I really wanted to, because I know I'm going to have to give it up in a minute. I do see those mountains in the distance that I'm approaching pretty quick. I think the average height there is about a thousand feet. So at some point I will have to climb, but not quite yet. Um, I just remember a couple times coming back on this road that, uh, again, you can get going really, really, really fast, fortunately or unfortunately. But uh, I always remember that police officers really, really like to camp out in this little area right over here. So whenever you'd come after that, you'd have to actually slow the car back down so you didn't run the risk of uh, getting spotted if you was there that particular day. But uh, the amount of traffic you're seeing right now, about the amount of traffic I'd expect. Now, uh, being in a little helicopter like this is uh, kind of gives you a different perspective on flying. For one reason, first of all, I can see. Uh, second of all, you're not really going to fly IFR or any sort of real cross country. This is definitely more of a sightseeing kind of thing to do. If I was flying a, one of the big air helicopters like the yeah, 407 or the 412 or the 206, yeah, that's definitely going to be a little bit more business like. But I will save those flights for another day because I kind of have to practice a little harder to be able to handle those helicopters. This thing is really, really, really pleasant once you kind of get the hang of it. Um, I've disabled all stability assists, by the way, because um, they are nice up to a certain percentage, but I find that they just kind of take away the control from you, and uh, that can just get a little difficult sometimes. A uh, quick helicopter story, again, because you're a captive audience, and for some reason you're still listening. Uh, when I actually did get to fly one of these in the real world, I was uh, very impressed with how it handled. But again, coming from fixed wing, things were a little different. Uh, one thing I will say about it is the fact that the controls are so light, pretty much the pulse in your hand makes the helicopter vibrate, which is kind of what it's doing right now, kind of realistic. And the second thing is, um, when you're learning to hover, you cover a lot of ground. Yeah, I know that's a helicopter joke, but it's actually just still pretty funny. Now, one of the cool things we did, we got to do some auto rotation, which I won't do for you today. We also got to do a quick stop, and things along those lines. You really got to see the high performance, not really, of a helicopter. And um, as much as the guy I was flying with tried to scare the, uh, my pants off, he didn't really succeed because I'd already done emergencies like doors and alternators failing in the real plane. So again, I figure I'm in pretty good hands with that. That radio end tower by uh, uh, way on our left is a very, very distinctive landmark in the real world. It's kind of nice to see that they had it. Speaking of which, we are just about here. So now the highway has this big, crazy, scary merge where everybody tries to pull over and run you down. And we're going to be taking the right. We're also going to have to start slowing down a little bit as well, because uh, we're going to be landing in just a moment. Yeah. Go ahead and take the right. We're going to see Bolton Lake in just a second over on my left. Nice and aggressive, and there is our desired chocolate place. Not too bad. Not too bad. Okay, as I remember, the wind was coming out of the opposite direction, uh, more the kind of the northwest. So I'm going to go ahead and swing down nice and gentle. And then I'm going to go ahead and flip this thing around and put this thing down on the road, pick up our chocolate, and then we'll go somewhere else. I'm descending at 1,000 feet per minute. Not recommended in a helicopter, by the way, unless you're getting shot at. Too bad. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cruise over this. I'm going to trade all that wonderful speed I've been collecting this whole time to go ahead and uh, give us no altitude change. Pretty aggressive maneuver. You're actually going to see my rotor RPM spike up quite a bit as I'm loading that rotor down. Good event and work. We are looking good. Right. Now, um, I'm going to land on the street because the street has plenty of visibility. We're coming down a little too fast. There you go. Alright. Oh, 
to land right by that truck right there. It's much, much easier to land a helicopter into the wind than it is away from the wind. And one thing you got to remember when you're landing this thing is, um, since they don't have a track IR or anything like that, it's a little bit difficult to see exactly how far off the ground I am, so you have to forgive me if I bump this thing a little bit. Don't forget your ground effect. Whoa. Ah, pesky wind. Doesn't surprise me. Alright, this is close enough. Go ahead and run out and go get some chocolate real fast. Alright, get back into the helicopter. You can always tie this thing to like a lamppost or something and leave it running. Alright, so we're going to do a quick takeoff this time. So uh, we're going to need a lot of forward cycling to get this thing going. And then we're going to go land over at Heckler Field. Alright, so remember your uh, pedal position. Go ahead and lighten the skids just a little bit. And then we're just going to go ahead and give it basically full power and go. Generally, you don't use takeoffs that aggressive in a helicopter. If we were to have engine failure at any point during that aggressive maneuver, that would have been the end of time for us because we just wouldn't have had enough forward speed to recover. The reason we take those more aggressive takeoffs, or the less aggressive takeoffs you saw a moment ago when we took off over in Hartford, is because it gives us a little bit of extra speed to work with in case something goes wrong. Alright, let's go ahead and give ourselves just a wee bit more power, bring ourselves back into coordination. There's Bolton Lake there on the left. For some reason, nobody's out on their boat right now, which kind of surprises me. And our destination of Heckler Field is going to be just over here. it is. Nice. Go ahead and reduce my power a little bit. Got this thing going a little bit too hard. There we go. There's our destination. Go ahead and nose over and build up a little bit of speed. I'm not sure if they have a wind sock, but uh, we'll certainly take a look. Um, the real heckler field, by the way, is the back of somebody's farm. It's not nearly this large. And uh, they usually use RC airplanes. You, know, you wouldn't typically see you know, a helicopter like me flying in or out of there. Not that we could much there. I'm actually going to start slowing down a little early here. However, as you reduce collective, you've got to start applying right foot instead of left foot. You can already see how much the string is coming off. Grass field is in sight right below us. Very distinctive. Of course, um, oh, there is a sock. Nice. Alright, Mr. Sock, which way are you facing? Alright, seems to be facing that way. So we're going to go ahead and take a right traffic pattern. In the real world, uh, helicopters do typically fly right traffic patterns because it keeps them out of the way of the higher speed fixed wing aircraft. Alright. Keep our speed down. We're going to slow down just about nothing. I'm going to go ahead and take a nice gentle right turn here. Now make it a little bit steeper. These helicopters really do turn on a dime. Keep an eye on your speed here because you can accidentally put yourself into a really nasty death spiral where you start to eat your own turbulence. There we are. And we're in good shape. Slow down just a little bit more. Remember, the slower you fly, the more work it's going to take to keep the thing straight. You know, we call that hovering. Okay, there's our translational lift. Alright, so we got ourselves in a pretty hefty hover. Um, this helicopter just. Whoa! Careful should be concentrating rather than trying to talk to somebody I can't see. Um, when you're flying these things, you have to be very careful on these hot days because it's very easy to overheat the helicopter or get carburetor ice, which would also be very bad. So a pretty good hefty amount of uh, forward cyclic here. I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit more collective, just a little bit more. And we are down. That was a little rough and we'll probably need a new helicopter. Alright guys, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. By the way, if you want to shut this helicopter down, it's pretty easy. You're supposed to sit here for exactly three minutes and let the thing cool off before doing this, but uh, nobody's watching. Alright, so we go ahead and disengage all that stuff. We come back here and there's this cool little uh, handle that I can't seem to find because I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. Here it is. You pull that, and we're good. Alright guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Maybe you learned a little bit of something. Uh, we'll see you next time.